My brothers and sisters, we are here this morning to proclaim how great God loves God's mercy and God's faithfulness is to us who are gathered in this place and to the whole world. Yes, great is God's faithfulness and we have seen that in those who have sacrificed their lives so that we could enjoy the peace that we have been enjoying, so that we could be free. And that's why I would like to invite you this morning to join our hearts as we honor those who served our countries. We light this candle, remembering all those who served their countries in two world wars, trusting that others could and would carry the torch. We will not forget. We light this candle, remembering the sacrifices made by those on the home front during the two world wars. We will not forget. light this candle, remembering all those who were persecuted or killed on ideological ground, all those who were displaced by war, 
those who were victims of aggression and oppression, those who can never forget. We will not forget. We light this candle, remembering all those who are still victims of war and discrimination and persecution. We will not forget. Today is a day of memories. May we remember the sacrifices of people in the past. Today is a day of reflection. May we reflect upon the meaning of life and the purpose for which we were born. Today is a day of past battles. May we bring light 
to bear on the darkness which war brings to all who are touched by its reality. Today is a day of new beginnings. May we be open to God's wisdom and God's peace that passes all understanding. Once again, we gather on this Remembrance Sunday to remember our veterans, the lives lost and lives altered by the mark of war. Once again, we gather on this Remembrance Sunday to remember places around the world trapped at this time in a cycle of war and violence. May your will, O oh God, be done. May your peace be known. May your safety and harmony be among all people and all nations on earth as it is in heaven. This we pray in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, who was called the Prince of Peace and who has taught us to pray, saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Today's first reading is Joshua 24, verses 1 to 3a. 14 to 25. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the authors, officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors have served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites, who's in, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way, that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And then the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away your foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. second reading is Psalm 78, verses 1 to 7. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and know, that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from our children. We will tell to the coming generations the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, 
which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Solomon is 6 uh, verses 12 to 16. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care. Because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. May we find wisdom in today's readings. Thanks be to be God. Let us pray. Oh dear God, we give you thanks for the gift of wisdom. Wisdom which is among us and wisdom which is beyond us. And on this day that we call Remembrance Sunday, we just ask that you may help us find wisdom in that which we remember this coming week, this Wednesday, November 11th. And in doing so, we believe we'll be able to live lives that are wise. We thank you, oh dear God. And now, may you reflect with us. I uh, just wanted to say before we just jump into the pool of our reflection that if there is anyone among us who has been praying for snow, it's now about time to stop doing that <laughs> because we have had enough for both fall and winter. May God help us all in this season. The challenge of our lives is the subject of our reflection this morning. Sometime, I would have said long, long time ago, if I was maybe 96 years old or something, but I really hope that I'll get there uh, with the grace of God. So about uh, 11 years ago, I befriended a young man who was in his late 80s. And this young man's name was Benjamin. And as we, his friends would call him, Ben. Ben had served in World War II. And he was such an interesting man and I met him through other people who were also living in the same facility where he was. And these people through whom I came to know Ben used to attend our church. And I was very, very blessed by that friendship that he offered me. We became good friends and we enjoyed each other's company. And later, during our journey of friendship, 
I visited him on a number of occasions. And I remember particularly sometime in early November of 2010, when I paid Ben a visit. And on that day, I had no idea that that day will be our last day together to have what I would call a farewell conversation. Because a few weeks later, Ben was called home into the hand of our creator. But I would like to tell you that I was very happy because I had the time to say bye to him without even knowing it. And in our time together on that day, as we were visiting, we were able to cover so many topics. And one of them was Veterans Day, as it is called in the US. They used to call it Amstis or Remembrance Day, but in 1954, they decided to change the name to Veterans Day. And we were able to just cover that topic too about Veterans Day. So I decided to ask Ben as somebody who fought in one of the two world wars, this question. I said, Ben, as one who fought in World War II, what does November 11 mean to you? Ben looked at me and smiled. And as he was smiling, he said, for me, November 11 signifies a day to honor all those of us who served, and which include him, who served in the great wars of the 20th century. And an opportunity, he added, to reaffirm our responsibility and commitment to the cause for which they died. There was silence in the room. I thought I knew what he was talking about, but I said, you know what? I need to ask one more question. Then I asked him, what according to you, my friend Ben, is the cause for which those people died. Again, he smiled and said this to me. Peace in its fullest or richest sense. And by that, he referred to human well-being and justice. Justice, he said, not simply as a vehicle, a means of retribution for aggression or violence, but rather as a vehicle to a fair sharing of God's blessings with and among all children of God. My brothers and sisters, to recall or to remember such claims on our heart and even in our daily lives is to be challenged in our purpose, in our drive or in our commitment to work for the peace we have come to inherit. One of the passages we read this morning came from the book of Joshua. And to give you a background of that passage, it is actually taken from what is known as a farewell discourse. As Joshua was nearing the end of his life, he gathered the children of Israel together at the town of Shechem which 
was located in the central highlands of Israel. And there, our beloved friend Joshua was able to remind the children of Israel of the long history of all that God had done for them and even their ancestors. He reminded them of how God has helped those who had gone before them, those who had fought battles. He reminded them of God's goodness to them and even their nation. In other words, what Joshua was saying to the children of Israel is that if it had not been for God's merciful, loving, and faithful interventions in our history, we will not be where we are today. If God had not used some of the people who had gone before us to fight many battles so that we'll be where we are today, we will not even be able to enjoy the peace in the land we are in right now. In other words, Joshua was calling upon the people of Israel to remember who they were and whose they were. There were people who were saved by God and there were people who belonged to God and therefore everything that they had to do had to flow from the river that has been sustaining them. And that river is their faithful God. And then Joshua gave the people of Israel what we would call the challenge of their lives. When he said to them, put away, in other words, get rid of, defy, disregard the foreign God, the false God, deceptive God that are among you and incline, offer, give your heart to the Lord, God of Israel. Joshua encouraged the people of Israel to give their hearts because they, our heart are the center of everything. And whatever comes from our heart can influence what we do in our daily lives. Just like Joshua, my friend, oh, our friend Ben, gave me and has given you and I the challenge of our lives, my brothers and sisters. And according to the words that Ben shared with me, those words of wisdom, it is important for all of us who are gathered and scattered all over the world to honor to remember, to celebrate the memory of all those who paid the ultimate price for our freedom, for our peace, and for so many blessings that we have been enjoying. But may we always remember to resist deceptive God because we live in a world where we are told that in order for us to be peaceful, we have to revenge. When somebody does something to us, oh, there should be a payback time. When somebody hit us, we should hit them so that we may feel good, so that we may enjoy this life. 
I remember the words of the great Mahatma Gandhi, who once said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, will only lead us to a world where no one will have any eye, we'll all be blind. And perhaps where no one is going to have teeth and how we're going to be eating, my brothers and sisters. So Ben, just like Joshua, is calling upon us to be careful of some of the deceptive God who might divide us even when we go to the polls to elect our leaders. Let us remember, may we never forget to offer our heart to the God of those who fought hard to achieve the blessings that we have been enjoying. For those who crucified themselves or who God crucified, I would say, by other people so that we would enjoy the peace we have been enjoying. May we never forget that. And the words of Ben are a reminder to us that all those people who fell in battle, even those people who survived those wars could not have done what they did without the help of our God. And this is the God from whom all blessings flow. May God help us to accept the wise word of my friend, our friend Ben, as the challenge of our lives, as we remember those who fought, those who were crucified in order for us to be where we are at today.
as we uh, go to God during this time of prayers, I would like to just lift up a few names in our congregation here. And these are the names of people who have also served our country of Canada. We have Cecil Govin, Bill Harrison, and Wayne, Wayne Harker. And I can remember a few stories that Bill Harrison and Cecil Govin shared with me about the many sacrifices that not just soldiers, but also families and friends of those soldiers made here in Canada so that victory would be on the side who answered the call to fight for the peace we enjoy. And may God continue to be with these individuals and many more like them all over the world. And now I invite you to join me in these responsive prayers. O oh God, who always listens to us, who breathes new life into us, we, your people of this world, you so love, are divided into so many nations, religions, tongues, economic and socio-political affiliations. Deliver us from every evil that stands in the way of your saving purpose and fulfill the promise of your lasting peace on earth. From the curse of war and human failure that causes war, O oh Lord, deliver us. From pride that turns its back on you, O oh God, deliver us. From national vanity that poses as patriotism, O oh Lord, deliver us. From self-righteousness that will not compromise and from selfishness that glories in the oppression of others, O oh Lord, deliver us. From the lust <coughs> for property and power that drives humanity to kill or make laws that plan chaos. O oh Lord, deliver us from trusting in the weapons of war and mistrusting the counsels of peace. O oh Lord, deliver us from hearing, believing, and speaking lies about other nations and religions. O oh Lord, deliver us from groundless suspicions and fears that stand in the way of reconciliation. O oh Lord, deliver us from words and deeds that encourage discord, prejudice, and hatred from everything that prevents the human family from fulfilling your promise of peace. O oh Lord, deliver us. God of all nations, we pray for your children across the globe, of every land and race, that we may all be empowered to do your will and help establish your peaceable kingdom here on earth into places ravaged by conflict or unrest may your kingdom come into the heart of the terrorist may your kingdom come into the heart 
of one in military service. May your kingdom come into the heart of the politician. May your kingdom come into the heart of one bereaved by war. May your kingdom come into the heart of one made hungry. May your kingdom come into the heart of one made homeless. May your kingdom come into the heart of one who is ill. May your kingdom come into the heart of one who cares for the sick. May your kingdom come into the heart of one who has been abused. May your kingdom come into the heart of one who is addicted. May your kingdom come into the heart of one who is faced with unpayable debt. May your kingdom come into the heart of the lonely. May your kingdom come into the heart of the fearful. May your kingdom come into the heart of the depressed. May your kingdom come into the heart of the frontline worker. May your kingdom come into the heart of one we wish to pray for. May your kingdom come into the heart of our world. May your peaceable kingdom come and may your will be done. Amen. Liberating God, we can stand at the edge and watch while you seek to bring hope, healing, peace, and joy to everyone in the world. Or we can take that step of committing our lives as well as our gifts. 
in working with you in this ministry of grace. Bless, bless our, our gifts, bless, bless our, our lives, bless, bless our, our service, service, we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we say our blessing, I just wanted to say to all those who are celebrating their birthday in this month of November, and especially uh, Mitro's birthday, which is coming up in a couple of days, uh, we say to all of you, happy birthday, and may God bless you all. The lives of the people we honor today and the lives of those around us tell stories. God send us as creative artists who bear the joyful burden of serving as a conduit for the deep listening, which can lead to healing and wholeness. May the blessing of the God of peace and justice be with us. May the blessing of Jesus, who weeps the tears of the world turbulence, accompany us. And may the blessing of the Spirit, who inspires us to reconciliation and hope, walk with us from now into eternity. Amen. <laughs>